Come on, keep giving God glory. Yeah. If you know he is the great I am, he has provided for you. Come on, he is providing for you. And if life shall roll on, he will provide for you. He is the great I am. He is the great I am. Moses says, Lord, who should I tell Israel that sent me? Tell him. Tell them that I am has sent you. The one you cried out for deliverance, that's who sent you. The one who's everything you need, that's who sent you. Your bread when you're hungry, your water when you're thirsty, your way out of no way, hallelujah. Your shelter in the time of storm. He is everything that you need. I need somebody right where you are just to begin to praise him. No, you're already praising him. Keep praising him for being the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All I have needed, his hand has provided. Oh, oh, all that I've needed. <laughs> his hand has provided. I said all that I've needed, his hand has provided. Great is the Lord's faithfulness unto me unto me unto me make it personal right there right where you are make it personal say he's faithful to me he's faithful to me he's never let me down huh. he's never left me out he's never let me be defeated and i couldn't bounce back he is the great i am he's the great i am He's the great I am, and I have no need to fear because he is the great I am. Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. We honor and reverence the spirit of our Christ, and we greet each and every one of you in the name that matters most, and that is the matchless and majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Welcome to the TCI worship experience. I know you feel the presence of God where you are. And I know you feel his presence because he is omnipresent. He's here with us and he's there with you. Hallelujah. And there is no space, there is no distance that can annul or nullify that truth. God is God wherever we are. Hallelujah. He don't need us to be God. He's God all by himself. But since we are in agreement with him concerning who he is, we are experiencing a greater level of glory. Uh, with each day that passes by. And so we thank God for your presence, and most certainly, again, we greet you in the name that matters most, and that is the matchless and majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for the Bible is right when it declares that there's no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved, and so we're thankful to be the recipients and beneficiaries of everything that comes in and with the name of Jesus. I never tire of saying that there's still salvation in that name. There's still healing in that name. There's still deliverance in that name. There's still restoration and elevation, blessing and anointing breakthrough. It is all in the name of Jesus. And uh, we thank him because he is our rock and he is our fortress. He is our deliverer. In him we trust. Even in these turbulent and trying and testy times, God is still God. And we thank him for being that. Listen, for those of you who are sharing with us uh, in cyberspace via streaming services, we thank God for you for wherever you're viewing from. We thank God for you here in other places uh, in this great United States of America. And those of you who are viewing from around the world, we thank God for you. Uh, the list is growing in terms of the places from which the people of God share. But we want to thank God for those of you who are sharing uh, from various places. Those of you uh, who are in, uh, in Tennessee and those of you uh, who are in Louisiana and those of you who are in Baltimore, Maryland and uh, in Washington, D.C., the other places that you are viewing from, we thank God for you. Always we're thankful for our international audience, South Africa, Uganda, Australia, Taiwan. We thank God for all of you for sharing. And to the best church anywhere this side of heaven, Temple Church International, I see you, TCI, just wave at me real fast. Uh, holler if you hear me, whatever, you, whatever you're doing to let us know you're here. I'm so godly proud to serve such a great people. The Lord has uh, allowed me for 24 years uh, to lead the people of God. Sometimes I did not know where I was going. And uh, there, as a group, there is a, a segment of them who hung on 
and here with me in the midst of it all. TCI, I love and I appreciate you and I thank God for you. Thank God for those who are yet becoming a part of the TCI family and we appreciate you so much. Uh, by way of housekeeping, I do want to just remind you again to uh, join us every morning at 6 a.m. Uh, for 6 a.m. prayer uh, for two and a half years, close to three years now, every morning at 6 a.m. We've been praying, uh, and I said the other day that the Lord was preparing us and getting us into the practice of fervent prayer and intercession for days and times like these. And so I want you to join us, my brother, my sister, 730, uh, for our Bible study sessions on Tuesday night. We've been, uh, we've been studying God's Word. We've been having some interesting conversations, and uh, we thank God for those of you who have joined us, and we invite you to join us. Uh, even uh, more consistently as the time rolls on. Have you been blessed by the worship experience at TCI? I just, again, I need to see some hands, whatever it is that you do uh, to show us that you agree, and this has been so powerful and so potent uh, in our time of sharing. Numbers chapter number 11. Numbers chapter number 11. Before I read the text, I want to give you this disclaimer. This disclaimer is that this word is going to be challenging um, this word is going to be controversial, and perhaps if you don't hear it uh, with ears uh, that are anointed to hear, and if you don't hear it within the context in which it is shared, um, you may not understand um, what it is that's being shared today. Um, I may be misunderstood, I may be misrepresented, I may be misquoted. Uh, but that's one of the risks you run when you follow God and follow his leading. So I want us to look at Numbers chapter number 11. I want to begin reading at verse number 1. Uh, we are continuing in our series entitled The Exodus. And of course, uh, it chronicles Israel's exodus out of Egyptian bondage. For 430 years, the chosen people of God uh, have been uh, under the iron thumb of Pharaoh's uh, government. And uh, at the appointed time, at God's chosen time, he sends uh, Moses. He's raised him up with a dictate of deliverance and an edict of emancipation to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. God moves, the people of God are delivered, and now they are on their way from Egypt in route to promise. Next, Numbers chapter 11 continues that narrative. One more thing I'll say to you before I share from the Word of God. The book of Numbers can also be called the book of the wilderness dwelling. It chronicles Israel's some 40 years as they wander in the wilderness, never making it to the promised land. And so there are hints, there are uh, clues, uh, there, are, there is forensic evidence of what kept Israel out of Egypt or out of the promised land um, that I think we can learn from uh, in this present day as God is doing a work of deliverance uh, and liberation in the earth today. Numbers chapter 11. I want to begin reading at verse 1. I'll read from verse 1 through verse 6. And then I'll commence reading again at verse 33 and uh, through verse 35. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1. I'm reading from the New International Version and the word of the Lord says, Now the people complained about their hardships in the hearing of the Lord, and when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. That's going to be very key to our discussion. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord, 
and the fire died down. So that place was called Tabera because the fire from the Lord had burned among them. The rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, and onions and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. Verse 7, verse 8, and verse 9 goes on to describe what the manna is. It was the food that God had prepared for them to sustain them while they were in the wilderness. I want you to jump down with me, if you will, to verse number 33, where it says, But while the meat was still between their teeth, and before it could be consumed, the anger of the Lord burned against the people, and he struck them with a severe plague. Therefore, the place was called Kibrath Hatava, because there they buried the people who craved other food. From Kibrath Hataba, the people traveled to Hazaroth and they stayed there. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you for all things. We thank you for being God to us in every situation and circumstance. As the song declared and decreed, you are the great I am. You've proven yourself to be everything that we need. And the truth of the matter is all that we should ever desire. Today we thank you for your word, for your word is record of your thoughts towards us. Thoughts, to, uh, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give us a future and a hope. You have declared that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what you send it forth to do. The very thing that your mind has designed and your heart desires, it shall come to pass in our lives for two reasons. Number one, because you watch over it to perform it. And number two, because we trust in you. So today, God, we thank you for a sure word of prophecy. And we thank you, God. And we let you know that we trust in you with all of our hearts. We don't lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we will acknowledge you. And you promise you would direct our path. It does not matter what it looks like. We know that you're in control. And we submit to your will and we say, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. For we know that your way is right. Now, Father, let revelation knowledge flow. Share your heart. Reveal your mind. And in the way you bless us, we'll be satisfied. Anoint me that I might think your thoughts, that I might speak your word, that I might teach your precepts and your principles. Anoint your people with minds to understand, hearts to receive, and a will to apply what your word instructs. It is in Jesus' name we pray and we boldly declare the devil is defeated. God, you are exalted. Jesus, you are Lord. And all who agree with the prayer of the man of God shouted hallelujah. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Um, in our text, very interesting thing happens. Israel has been in the wilderness for about three days or so. As uh, One writer says that they are three days from the mountain of Revelation, the place where Moses will go. And he will receive what is known as the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments, the law that would govern his people as they move towards the land that he promised them. It is at this point in their wilderness wandering that there arises a complaint. And the complaint is so grievous to God that the text says that God sends fire and he sends fire to consume the outskirts of the camp of the Egyptians. The text also says that on the outskirts, there is this group called the mixed multitude or the rabble. It's interesting now that the complaint that is generated uh, against God it is influenced 
by this group called the rabble. I want to talk from the thought, beware of fire starters. Beware of fire starters. Subtopic, stay woke. Before I move any further, I feign not myself to be a prophet or an apostle to anyone, save those who are a part of the TCI family. That is my assignment. I'm well aware that I am accountable for their souls. But today I believe that this word is a warning for black America. Beware of five starters, stay woke. Good morning. Brothers and my sisters, over the past week or so, there has been a rash of video footage that has uncovered a very disturbing trend in this current period of civil unrest and social protest. Deacon Angie Grill, while I wholeheartedly believe that the murders of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George and Jamel Floyd, and other black Americans has sparked a genuine outrage in the hearts of good people of all kinds. What the before mentioned video footage has revealed is that much of the rage filled destruction that we have witnessed was either initiated, incited, and or perpetrated by masked people who did not live in, nor were they a part of, the communities in which they had a hand in destroying. In Minneapolis, Houston, Newark, Chicago, DC, Seattle, and even here in my beloved city of Charlotte, North Carolina, outsiders were caught on video passing out bricks, spray painting buildings, breaking out windows, and chiseling and breaking up pavement in the communities of the oppressed. I'd like to suggest to you that while racism in America and abroad is an undeniable socio-political issue, it is also being politicized by certain factions of society for the purpose of advancing agendas that are not solely rooted in equality, justice, and liberation for black people. That is to say, many groups in this present day of unrest, and in fact over the course of history, have attached the freight car of their initiatives to the locomotive engine of black oppression and liberation from the same and are riding the wave of the movement's momentum in hopes of landing a platform of shared power. Please listen. Consider the fact that the civil rights movement of the 60s was a response to Jim Crow laws and social constructs that were in place to deprive black people as a whole of equal civil and humane treatment. If you were a man and black, you were discriminated against. If you were a woman and black, you were discriminated against. In the 60s, if you were a child and black, you were discriminated against. No matter your profession, your pedigree, or your ability to perform an intellectual or menial task, if you were black, you were discriminated against. Elder Greer, shortly after or perhaps simultaneously with the passing of the Civil Rights Act 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and the Civil Rights Act of 1968, there arose other movements, i.e. the second phase of the feminist movement, i.e. the equality in education movement, 
i.e. the equality in housing movement, and eventually uh, the LGBTQ movement. In many instances, my brothers and my sisters, black people who belong to these various demographics and be they began to identify more with and give their time, voice, and energy to those causes uh, than, than they did the cause of black liberation. And in many instances, they became the face and the voice of the movements only to discover that there were and still are implicit and sometimes explicit discrimination and biases in those subcultures. So when we began to give our voice, our energy, and our attention to these other movements, when our sisters began to give their voices and their energy to the feminist movement, when those of us who wanted to be educated at a higher level began to give our energy to this whole movement to desegregate schools and to be able to attend uh, historically white institutions to be educated, when we uh, champion the cause to move into communities uh, that did not favor us by way of demographics, where the residents did not look like us. When we gave our energy to those movements, when the, our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters began to give their energy to the LGBTQ movement, we found out that still we were discriminated against based upon the color of our skin. I had a talk with a very dear friend of mine just the other day who shared with me two instances to validate my, posit, my position and to validate my point. She was moving back to Charlotte and she sought housing in a particular place. She qualified by way of her credit. She qualified by way of her income. There was nothing, absolutely nothing, that would disqualify her from moving into the place that she chose to move into. When she filled out the application, the application was quickly, was speedily accepted. Uh, residence in that particular domicile was granted. But when she sent a picture, a copy of her driver's license, all of a sudden, the person who had granted her the permission to stay in that place changed their mind. She also said to me that she had a conversation uh, with a young man that she was uh, in relationship with, a young man who she views as a son, who said that he was sick and tired, disgruntled and upset, that as a black gay male, he was discriminated against and objectified simply for his sexual attraction. My brothers and my sisters, as I told you this text, this message is going to be challenging, but I need to help you to understand that in the midst of what we're going through, we must not be careful or must be careful not to let the message, the method, and the momentum of the movement for black liberation to be hijacked and co-opted to our overall detriment. Let me stop here and let me share with you before I go any further that I am all in favor of women's rights. I believe that women ought to be treated equally with men. This is getting ready to mess some of y'all up, but I believe that every human being ought to be given equal rights, no matter their sexual preference, their orientation, or the like. Everybody deserves to be treated as a human and not discriminated against based upon anything that exists. 
But my brothers and my sisters, I got to call it like I see it. I got to tell it like the Lord give it to me. And until we understand that what we are experiencing now is an attack. It is an attack on black America. And that black America must stand solid and consolidated and unified against the forces of evil. I've heard some say that this issue is not black versus white. I've heard say, some say that this issue is about good versus evil. I would like to suggest to you that it is true that it is about good versus evil. But the truth of the matter, when it comes to racism in America and abroad, it just so happens that the face of the evil of racism, it appears in white supremacy. And the face of the oppression of black folk, it appears in the face of black Americans. In our text, we see the negative influence of others in the process of divine deliverance. It is quite clear that the hand of God is with Israel as he totally destroys the systems and structures of Egypt that for more than 400 years has held the Hebrews captive. Exodus chapter 12 verse number 38 says that a mixed multitude came up out of Egypt with Israel this mixed multitude, I would have you to know, are people who are not Israelites by birth. They were slaves who were of other nationalities who were in Egyptian bondage. They were people who were Egyptians, who were second and third class citizens, who were also under the oppressive thumb of Pharaoh's regime. And when God began to move through Egypt, everyone who was oppressed saw the hand of God moved and they attached themselves to the Israelites who were coming out of bondage. The text says that when they come out, this mixed multitude of Exodus 12 and 38, they begin to move Israel, watch this, to complain but based upon their desire to experience what they had back in Egypt. The minute it got hard in the wilderness, the minute it got tough in the middle passage, the minute it got hard for them, they began to cry out against God complain against Moses and the outcry against God watch this and the complaint against Moses begin to move throughout the masses of the Israelites and they begin to complain as well I'm not making it up it's right here in the text in the text it says that they complained about their hardships and when the Lord heard it he was angry and he was aroused and he sent fire, watch this, and consumed the outskirts. When you read back in the book of Exodus, God gives Israel explicit instructions to say that when you are traveling, if there are any foreigners, if there are any outsiders who are with you, number one, they must be on the outskirts of the community. Number two, they must be circumcised if they are going to be with you. Oh, God. In other words, the fire starts where the complaint starts. And the complaint starts where the outsiders are. My brothers and my sisters, when you hear this, hear it with the ears of the spirit. Because in this season, we must be careful. We must be cognizant of the fact that if the enemy cannot get you one way he will get you another way that the enemy sometimes will send spies in who have an agenda that does not align with yours and they will incite you to complain and incite you to do things that you ought not do in order watch this to get out 
from under Pharaoh's grip, uh, but to get their own agenda move forth. I'm going to say something else to make you mad. I may as well go ahead. I, I understand. I understand that the president of the United States is the worst example of what a president ought to be like. I buy the 45. I hope we get rid of him as soon as possible. But please understand uh, that if the next one does not have an agenda that promotes equality, that it promotes justice, uh, that it promotes uh, uh, us uh, as a people uh, rising above uh, the drudgeries of oppression in this nature, we will in this nation, we will find ourselves back in the same place we were before it started. I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. Never forget that after the civil rights legislation was passed never forget that after the voting rights act was passed never forget that after schools were desegregated never forget that after after communities were desegregated that it was on the heels of that that the communities in which we lived were filled with drugs and guns that we had no money or no power or to buy. Never forget uh, that once uh, we were able, watch this, uh, to eat in places uh, where we could not eat. Uh, as we were able uh, to shop in stores uh, that we could not shop before. Uh, as we were able uh, to do things that we had never done. Uh, there was still and still are implicit and explicit biases uh, based upon the color of your skin. Never forget uh, that if you send in an application and your name is Shaquitha and somebody else's name is Madeline that Madeline's application is going to be pulled before Shaquitha's never forget I'm going to talk whether y'all want me to or not that just because you have a degree from an Ivy League school that when your picture is attached to your application that your degree from an Ivy League school does not guarantee guarantee you uh, that somebody uh, from a state accredited school uh, that does not look like you uh, will be hired before you are. Never forget, I came to tell y'all, stay woke, stay woke, stay. and while there are some well-meaning people uh, who have joined in this upheaval, this uprise, uh, this resurgence uh, of outcry against uh, racism, please never forget uh, that at the end of the day, the enemy is so slick that he would try to weaken everything that God is doing in the midst of the oppressed by attaching the agenda of other people to cause us to be weakened in our own movement. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. So three things I need to tell you, and I'm going to get out of here because the text says, text says, that while Israel was in the wilderness and complaining that God sent a fire, yes, sir. <laughs> that, that, that the place was being burnt up. And it was being burnt up because of the influence of the rabbles. Three things I want to drop on you, and I'm done. Ain't going to be no hooping. Ain't going to be no hollering, ain't going to be no shouting, I'll be done in about five minutes. But I need y'all to pay attention to this. Be warned that not everything that cries hallelujah is holy. Be warned that not everything and everybody that says they are for you is for you. Okay, come here. Help me to preach it for a minute, Paul. Help. What, what, what did Paul say, Heather? What did Paul say, Denzel? Pa pa Paul said that uh, Luke and I and a company that was with us, we were going through the land. And there was a girl who was following us, who for three days said, these are the men sent from God. To show us the way. And Paul said she was saying the right words. 
but she had a bad spirit. <laughs> and I heard her on the first day and I didn't say nothing. I, heard her on the second day and I didn't say nothing but something was stirring on the inside of me and finally on the third day I couldn't hold it no more and I turned around and I identified that even though the words that she was saying was right the spirit with which she was saying the words were wrong and I had to call a demon out of her hallelujah because she had been assigned by her master to bring us down to a place of ineffectiveness y'all gotta hear what I'm saying and I'm gonna close the lesson but please please y'all stay woke Dr. King told us to remain awake during a revolution don't 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 don't, don't be sidetracked don't 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 be thrown off don't 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 break your focus and please hear me this is not a hateful message this is not a, a message uh, that is judgmental or prejudgmental this is a message that the Holy Ghost gave me to say uh, that we cannot afford in this season to experience what we experienced in the last season that we must stay on course with the very thing that God has led us to do God has done too much for us 430 years of oppression in this nation and now the systems and the structures are being destroyed before our very eyes and don't you dare to you dare allow the enemy room and place to derail what God is doing in this day and in this season. Number one, don't allow your appetite to be influenced by the agitation of others. Don't allow your appetite to be influenced by the agitation of others. Where did I get it from? I got it from the text. Verse 4 through 5 gives us an explanation of why God sent the fire. Listen to what the word of God says. Text says in verse number 4 that the rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, if we had meat to eat, we remember the fish we ate in Egypt, and we ate it at no cost. We remember the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlics. But we have lost our appetite, and we never see anything but this manner. The first thing God wants to do, Colbert, uh, when he delivers his people, the first thing that God does is God changes your diet so that he can change your appetite. Y'all miss what I said. I said that whenever God wants to deliver a people, the first thing he does is he changes their diet so that he can change their appetite. When God brought them out, God supplied something called manna, something called angel's food. It was something that they had never eaten before. Y'all got to catch this. And God provided the manna for the express purpose of sustaining them while they were in the wilderness. He provided, he provided manna, watch this, to break them from their diet in Egypt. Hmm. The truth of the matter is he wanted them to get used to a new diet because the old diet caused them to be complacent in their bondage. Listen to what they said. They said, ah, if only we had meat to eat and now all we see day in and day out is this manna. And they begin to despise what God was using to sustain them in route to their purpose, their promise. They were so attached to the diet of Egypt that all it took was people, watch this, who were not Israelites to begin to complain about the diet that they were eating for them, watch this, to resort to warning the food of oppression. Oh God, you gotta be careful not to let 
people uh, who have an agitation influence your appetite. There are certain people who are upset with what the manner of God says. They are upset with the word of God. They are upset with what God has declared and decreed. And if you mess around and let their agitation affect your appetite, you will soon begin to despise God's word as well. Oh God, I'm going to talk whether y'all want me to or not. And the truth of the matter is, Israel began to cry out the same thing that the Egyptians who came out of bondage with them cried out for. Don't you realize that it was that food that Pharaoh gave you, that food that he gave you for free. Don't you realize that it was that diet that he used to strengthen you so you could advance his causes and build his kingdom. Be careful not to allow your voice and your energy to be used to build somebody else's kingdom. There are some people, watch this, who understand that if they get Trump out of office, and we ought to get him out, but if they get him out, then it gives them a greater possibility to advance their cause. Be careful not to link up with people who hate Trump so much that they wind up once he is out forgetting who you are. I'll stop right there. Number two, don't let someone else's cravings kill you. Let me say that again. <laughs> Don't let someone else's cravings kill you. In verse 4 and 5, y'all got to catch this. I'm getting out of here. In verse 4 and verse number 5, the text says that they complained about the appetite or about the diet because the outsiders complained. But then number 2 in verse 34, the Bible says that not only did the fire burn, uh, Moses cried out. He said, God, stop the fire. And they stop the fire. But in verse number 34, hear what the word of the Lord says. It says that while the meat was still between their teeth, before it could be consumed, the anger of the Lord burned against the people and he struck them with a severe plague and verse 34 says therefore the place was named Kibrath Hatava because there at that place they buried the people who had craved other food y'all missed this when they cried out and they asked God for meat God tells Moses Moses if meat is what they want meat is what I will give them as a matter of fact Moses I need for you to tell them to consecrate themselves to set themselves aside because I'm getting ready to sin I'm going to sin quail I'm going to blow in a wind and if they want meat I will give them as much meat as they can eat but Moses I need to tell you that because Israel has a and adapted to uh, the customs and the appetite of the rebel. Uh, I'm going to give them so much meat to eat uh, that it's going to make them sick. Uh, that it's going to run out of their nostrils. It's going to run out of their ears. Uh, They're going to have diarrhea. They're going to be throwing it up. Uh, and at the end of it all, uh, the word says that everybody who craved the meat, uh, the Lord buried them in that place. Y'all miss what I said. Uh, you see, it was the rabble who influenced it. It was the rabble, the mixed multitude, who started crying out and influenced the people of Israel, the people of God to cry out. But when God came and dealt with it, he did not just deal with the rabble or the outsiders. He dealt with the people who adopted and adapted to what the outsiders wanted don't you dare let somebody else's cravings kill you. Don't you dare let what somebody else wants be your destruction, be, be the thing that pulls you down. God, I wish I could preach it the way that I felt it. But here is what we need to understand. That 430 years of oppression because of the color of your skin is the thing that uniquely qualifies 
glorifies you for crying out for justice in this day and in this time you could not help the color you were when you were born you could not help the the, the communities that you grew up in you could not help the disadvantages that you were in and don't you mess this move of God up champion somebody else's cause somebody ought to shout yes Lord in this place I got one more thing and I got to get out of here uh, don't, don't let someone else's cravings kill you uh, uh, God uh, all of them got buried all of them got buried all of them got buried uh, uh, the rabble and the Israelites got buried uh, they were buried in that place but then thirdly uh, and I'm done with the message I told y'all I wasn't preaching long I'm not hooping I'm not hollering but number three think about what the past teaches you about the future uh, when the fire starters show up and when the fire starters are exposed and, and when God said this is the wake up call wake up and see what it is is happening around you uh, make sure that you take time to think about what the past teaches you about the future I'm not making it up it's in verse number 35 watch this the text says from Kibroth Hatava from the place uh, where the people watch this the people were buried because they craved other foods the people were buried because the manna was not good enough for them the people uh, that were buried because the word of God uh, rubbed them the wrong way in that place the Bible says that they traveled from there and they traveled to a place called Hazaroth and they stayed at Hazaroth. What does Hazaroth mean? I'm glad you asked. Hazaroth means encampment in the wilderness. In other words, God said here is what I'm trying to say to y'all. Based upon what you have seen about allowing others to attach their agenda to your liberation. Based upon what you've seen I need you to sit there and I need you to think about it I need you to think about how you saw the devastation I need you to think about how you saw how the negative influences of those who had an Egyptian mindset has landed you in graves he said I need you to sit and I need you to think about it and I'm closing right here I'm closing by telling you my brother I'm telling you my sister and I don't mind being misunderstood understood I don't mind being misrepresented those who know me know me those who love me love me those who know where I stand know where I stand and I ain't trying to get no platform and I don't mind losing one if I got one but I got to tell it like the Lord give it to me the Lord said make sure that you understand that if you don't learn from your history you are destined to repeat it oh god y'all miss what i said if you don't learn from your history you are destined to repeat it let me say that one more time if you don't learn black america from your history you are destined to repeat it and god has been too good to us in this season for us to be asleep in the midst of this move of God hallelujah he's destroying systems and he's destroying structures and we need to understand that when God opens our eyes to the fact that we are discriminated against still in subcultures that he is trying to show us that if we are going to overcome we are going to overcome not by being divided but by being unified we are not going to overcome by being separated but by unified I hear some of y'all religious folk out there saying I ain't preaching against what the Bible preach against but the kingdom is like a net and it draws in all kinds and God does the separating so I will continue to stand for my sisters in their fight for equality I will continue to stand for my LGBTQ brothers and sisters in their fight to be treated like human beings I will continue to stand with them but on the other hand I'm not going to
to be weak and jellyback uh, to declare and decree uh, that just anybody can bring their agenda over here uh, attach it to our engine uh, and ride on our wave not everybody has been discriminated against for 430 years not everybody has been refused to sit in restaurants not everybody has been refused entrance into institutions of higher learning not everybody has been called boy and gal even though they are mature not everybody that history is unique to us and so beware of fire starters be wise as a serpent but harmless as a dove. It's the last thing I'm going to say. The church is not exempt. Be careful of leaders who will tell you to love everybody but won't risk losing their platform to speak up for those who look like you. It ain't enough. It ain't enough to encourage us just to have conversations. There must be There has to be, and I'm closing with this so I know a lot of folk are going to get mad. If we're going to be like Jesus, we got to be like Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus died for the oppressed. He lost his influence. lost his platform and inevitably lost his life because he was a revolutionary. His family wrote him off. His own people set him up to be killed. Because he was a revolutionary. Let's pray, brothers. Jesus said, No, you said that I came to bring peace, but I did not bring, come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. I came to divide, watch this, Israel over social and theological issues. I came to see where you stand. It's the last thing and I'm done. Um, study the scriptures. And see what Jesus' stance was on the liberation of Israel. He says to the Syrophoenician woman, it's not good for me to give the children bread to people who don't have covenant. There is a blatant disparity between Gentiles and Hebrews of his day. Man wants Jesus to heal his son. Jesus says, tell me where your son is. The man says to Jesus, well, nope. Um, you can't go home with me because if you go home with me, you as a Jew will be considered by your people to be defiled by a Gentile. 
when he's talking to the woman at the well, the woman at the well says, how is it that you, a Jew, ask me a Samaritan for water? Jesus does not ignore the issue of race. Neither does he ignore or refute his assignment that he came for the lost sheep of Israel. And at the risk of not being politically correct, I just got to share what the Lord gave to me. He that has an ear will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I want us to pray together. After we pray, we're going to have, we're going to observe the Holy Communion. But I believe that God always shines a light on whatever he shines a light on because he wants his people to see and not sweep it under the carpet. Beware of fire starters. I'm telling you prophetically, beware of fire starters. Beware, beware, beware. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. And we praise you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. We thank you for being a God who would not have us to be ignorant. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that your word does not address or does not cover. You declared in 1 Corinthians that these things, 1 Corinthians 10, that the things that happened in the word of God happened for our learning. God, you want us to learn from history so that our future will be different than our past. I pray, God, that the word that's shared not fall on deaf ears or neither will it fall on ears that are biased or that are tuned to hearing anything other than what you wanted to have said today. But I pray, God, that this word would find home in the hearts of some. Yea, even all who listen. That they may be encouraged to do even as the last point of this message suggested. To think about the lessons of the past. So that what we experience in the future will not be the same that we've experienced in our yesterday. We thank you, Father, for being the God of liberty, the God who liberates your people, the God who wants all of your people to be equal. No matter the color, no matter the creed. You want us all to be treated fairly, humanely. As your word instructs. And so Father we thank you for intervening in the affairs of people. In the affairs of men. In the affairs of the earth. And we praise you for being glorified. As God in our midst. It's in Jesus name we pray. And we thank you. Now, if there be anyone under the sound of my voice. Who does not know Jesus Christ as his or personal Lord and Savior. You can know him in the free partnering of your sin. I can tell you, you don't have to get cleaned up to get saved. You get saved to get cleaned up. If God could save me, he can save anybody. And today the word of God declares that if you would just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and with the heart man believes unto righteousness I want to pray a prayer for you then I want to pray with you I want you to repeat after me if in fact today is your day to give your life to Christ and receive accept the free gift of salvation that comes in him father I thank you for those who listen I thank you for 
their life. I thank you for appointing them to hear this word on today. Jesus, you said that if you be lifted up from the earth, you would draw all men unto yourself. To the best of my ability, I've shared with your people what I'm convinced you shared with me to give to them. And Father, even in the midst of these times in which we share, these times in which we live, I need you to convince them that you are a God who accepts us. That we can come to you just as we are, that you might transform us into who you created us to be. Help my brother, help my sister by the power of your grace divine to make the wisest and best decision that they could have ever made. And that's to accept the free gift of salvation in the person of Jesus the Christ. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Now my brother, my sister, right where you are, if you've never accepted and I ask you to come into my life. I give you permission to be my Lord and I acknowledge you as my Savior. I make one confession for every sin that I've ever committed and every wrong that I've ever done. And you said in your word, if I confess my sin, you will forgive my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, I accept your forgiveness. I thank you for forgiving me. And I thank you for making me clean. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit, with your mind, with your presence, and with your power that my life might come into the order that you've created me to have. Now, Father, I say in your presence, the presence of your people, and in the face of the devil himself, I'm saved, and I know that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my brother, my sister, I can just tell you what the Word of God declares. It says that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed, will not be disappointed. Whosoever calls on his name shall be saved. Today is the first Sunday, and we traditionally observe the Lord's Supper. And so we're going to ask you, my brother, my sister, if you will go to your fridge and your cupboard, Grab very quickly some grape juice, some kind of juice, as long as it is a non-alcoholic beverage. And some, in some customs, they drink the fruit of the vine that is fermented. Uh, but uh, grab that and grab crackers, grab bread, that we might eat the holy meal together. Here is what I love, that before they ate together, Jesus makes a confrontational statement. And the confrontational statement is that one of you will betray me he confronts the treachery and the evil at the table but that does not stop him from communing and today this has been a very confrontational message but don't allow it to cause you not to commune and to fellowship with us with your brothers and your sisters to share in the Eucharist worldwide as the universal church honors and observes the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. I'll give you a minute to go grab what it is. What can wash away my Hallelujah.
And it was on the night that our Lord was betrayed that he took the bread, that he blessed it. He broke it and he gave it. He said, this is my body that is given for the sins of many. My body that is given for you, take ye and eat all of it. And after the like manner, he took the cup and said, this is my blood that is shed for the remission of the sins of many. Take ye and drink all of it. For as often as ye eat of this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he come before we close, before we leave this place. I want to encourage you by way of reminder that it takes money to do ministry. I'm so godly thankful and so godly proud of those of you who join with us every week in sowing and, and giving into the ministry souls of Temple Church International. TCI, you've responded wonderfully well in your tithes and in your offerings. I want you to keep up the good work. Those of you who are from all over who come to support and groan to appreciate what God is doing here at TCI. We don't discount your giving either. We thank God for you. We're honored that you would cho choose to sow into our soils. You encourage us to keep doing the work of the ministry. To that end, there are four ways that you can give. First of all, you can give online. You can go to tci-charlotte.com. Click on the donations tab. Follow all of the prompts until you're instructed to give and take your bank card, your credit card, your debit card and give even as the Lord instructs. You can also text to give by texting the word give, G-I-V-E to area code 336-891-4023 Again, follow all the prompts and when instructed to give sow that liberal seed. Thirdly, you can give via cash app dollar sign church favor Fourth, you can pay by phone 704-507-2397. You can call in right now. You can give right now. But in advance, I want to say thank you very kindly. I appreciate you so much for giving. And you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. In the tradition of the church, when Jesus had shared that last meal with those who were in his circle, those who were connected to him. He did not pronounce a benediction. The Bible says, and they sang a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. Thank you for joining us. And Brother Quay is going to continue in the singing of our song, the hymn of the church, nothing but the blood of Jesus. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. Stay safe. Keep your hands washed. Your surfaces clean. Hallelujah. Keep your distance where you're mad. Everything they're telling you to do. But remember that you are kept. You are covered. And you are preserved because of the blood of Jesus. God bless you. Have a great week. Take care.